Hi and welcome back to the channel in Thailand with Toon and Lee on the farm and today we're going to talk about life so easy but why do a lot of us Falang come to Thailand and make it so hard for ourselves by venturing into uh, living and working on a farm that's what we're going to be talking about today it's an official poll right then so yet again we've uh, polled the guys on our uh, Facebook group Rural Life in Thailand if you haven't checked that out yet, there's over a thousand viewers now. Been going since last August uh, 2018 and a lovely bunch of people on there. So if you're interested on what makes us tick out here uh, or if you're looking at coming out here, then uh, get yourselves on there. So let's get into it and uh, discover why so many of us are, are grafting our tits off and uh, working for next to nothing. Well, I've got a little bit of a list to get through guys. Uh, it's in absolutely no particular order and uh, we'll kick off with probably the main issue out here. Well, I think it is and that's the heat. In the, at the moment, we're in the middle of the dry season and it is pig hot. It's the reason that um, I'm not grafting at the moment because uh, by nine o'clock this morning, uh, I was really struggling. So. Uh, started using the two t-shirt system and uh, they weren't drying out in time so I, I thought it was time to uh, get in the shade and uh, do this video uh, it's incredibly hot hot and humid and uh, it's dangerous as well heat stroke heat stress dehydration very very bad yes you can uh, do your jobs early morning or late afternoon early evening but there's no getting away from it. Heat is a massive, massive issue. Storms out here, my God. I mean, all storms can potentially be lethal, but the electrical storms out here, they can come from bloody nowhere. And, uh, well, there's always a few people killed every month out here when, when you hear that the, the electrical storms have hit. And certainly in the rural areas, if you haven't got many tall trees and all that sort of thing, and you haven't got lightning protection on your house, that is an issue. For me, it scares the shit out of me when I'm out um, the other end of the farm with the ducks and stuff like that. And then the storm comes and it's a race to get them away and uh, get back to the house where we have got lightning protection. So electrical storms is something that you uh, have to be very very aware of uh, probably linked with that is the flooding and it's a huge issue across Thailand I think I've covered it before uh, and soil erosion that sort of thing but when you get such a volume of water in a short space of time flooding can be a real issue um, so there's a lot of standing water that can accumulate very very quickly so drainage is a big thing on your farm and of course if you're keeping fish you've got your ponds and that sort of thing you got to make sure that you've got uh, your sides built up nice and high make sure that all your fish don't get away um, an available water source and electric so a lot of places a lot of places in the middle of nowhere you're gonna have to drill a, a borehole or um, or dig a well uh, for us we've, we've got both uh, we've got more water than we could possibly dream of using. It's, uh, well, it's just not an issue for us, but for a lot of places it is. I mean, if you, this side of the road is us and it drops down into a basin, you go across the road here, uh, that's as flat as a witch's titty. So, um, yeah, they, they get the rains obviously, and it, uh, the soil's a little bit damp at the moment, but it won't hold the water that side. So they have to be very, very careful what they grow and what time of year. Uh, electricity, uh, we're totally off grid as most of you know. Um, it's gonna cost way too much to go on the mains uh, and run that from, from the nearby village to us. In the future it is coming down here, but when is, uh, is another thing. Thai time, isn't it? You can, never, you can never guarantee it's gonna happen. And if it is gonna happen, you never know when. So uh, solar power is, it, it, whether or not it's viable is, a, is another thing, but for us, we had no option. If we wanted to uh, watch some Thai TV, <clears throat> uh, then we needed to go on solar. Uh, chemicals out here, oh my God, bloody hell. 
I do start to rant when we talk about chemical use in Thailand and yes we have used chemicals in the past and we use a little bit now just for keeping the palm nut alive and some of the, the young coconuts um, but apart from that we are trying our best to be organic it was a huge eye-opener a big shock to the system to see how much chemical is used farming in Thailand and to say that it isn't very well controlled is a vast understatement finding good help um, <laughs> yeah we've, we've had a couple of people that are, are okay only one guy has been brilliant that's Pyong we're still trying to get him back from Burma and sponsor that bloke um, but as well as it being difficult to find good help finding reliable help is also an issue they may work, work quite well the first day second day might be so much third day they might not turn up fourth day they turn up hung over um, so yeah you find someone good you do your best to keep them happy and hold on to them um, it's hard to get people to come and do a day's work for you around here now everyone wants set prices so for putting this cassava in on the farm next door a team turned up to do that and they get paid per rye rather than pay someone uh, anywhere from sort of like 250 to 350 400 a part a day to to go sticking your cassava sticks in so uh, finding help is becoming more problematic uh, less and less people want to be working on farms these days they all want to be in the uh, the offices and working online under uh, air conditioning units um, litter well there you go that, and I didn't do this on purpose there's your first bit there now our, our our place does look like a bloody shantytown I admit that and we're a bit of slack with the weeds and uh, tidying everything up but litter is a is a no-no uh, it didn't really used to bother to until she had eight years in the UK um, because when I first met her she would just launch this this stuff along here now none of this is ours I guarantee that this is through people working on neighboring lands uh, and then sitting it because I cleaned along the road here so uh, they sat in there in the shade and just just look it's just every couple of yards so every now and again I come along and uh, collect everything up but of course there's there's glass bottles and that and if you don't see them and you run over them with the tractor then uh, a bit of an issue later on in your little flip-flops uh, I won't rant on about that too much it is a huge issue out here uh, they have tried to introduce fines and that sort of thing out here but uh, no it's it's crazy it really really does piss me off um, but it doesn't piss me off as much as it as it used to see in there and and down here all over the bloody place so I know I look like a tramp but litter just no 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 right move on uh, dangerous creatures uh, got stung yesterday for the second time by a scorpion see I'm and, and, and I'm still vlogging didn't cry didn't scream um, just one of the small ones I just got in the back of my t-shirt and I felt a bit of a pinch took my t-shirt off and scorpion dropped out um, uh, the snakes nothing's really gone for me um, we only really deal with those if they're near the house if they're away from the house we let them go I don't kill all snakes uh, against popular belief that is um, what else it's nothing really around here the, the the wasps are nasty little buggers you get the wrong ones of those the wolf dan um, you get a big nest of them and you disturb them then you you're in trouble uh, then you know the issues with anaphylactic so I have to be careful I've been stung one too many times with those um, but that's about it for, for those really um, buying land for the right price yeah look, fucking litter there again fuck's sake um, you can get some cracking bargains depends on your location of course uh, and some people are of the opinion it, it depends on whether you turn up for the, uh, for the negotiations uh, I recommend that you don't 
but keep fully abreast of what's going on. So you've got to fully trust your missus to uh, make sure she gets a good deal for you. Recouping your investment, fucking impossible, guys. Just uh, get real. You go and buy a place for a, a million, spend a million on it, and start putting cassava in or growing rice. One, you're lucky to make a profit anyway. <laughs> uh, and, and if you do, uh, you probably need to be 137 before you break even. Uh, just look upon it that you're investing in the lifestyle that you want to live. Don't, don't start being all silly and, and, and think, you know, a couple of years to break even, a couple of years to start turning it around and make a bit of a profit and then you'll be minted. I know I joke about it a lot, but you know, don't have your head in the clouds. Uh, protective clothing <laughs> uh, versus heat stroke and heat stress. Now, it's been quite well covered. I used to teach quite a lot of aspects of uh, health and safety. Uh, so do as I say, not, not do as I do. Um, no, ideally it's, you need all the gear, don't you? But uh, if you wore half the PPE here that we used to back in the UK or teach people that they had to wear, uh, you'd drop bloody dead. You'd have a heat stroke within about half an hour if you started doing any graft wearing that. So, you know, it's a fine balancing act, isn't it? At the end of the day, it's, it's, it's your risk, isn't it? Um, I mean, I'd, I used to do streaming in my bloody flip-flops and and no eye protection at all. Just we used to wear my glasses, glass, glass lenses as well. Now I'm, I'm totally covered up and um, protective glasses, gloves, and uh, here's one for you. The first time I wore a pair of DeWalt gloves, good, good protective gloves, split me knuckle. Uh, streamer just hit a stud, didn't break the gloves, but uh, it was hit me with enough force to split one of my knuckles open. So you take your chances. Um, yes, I'm always in my bloody flip-flops, as I am now. Uh, yeah, you do get some cuts and abrasions and you stump your toes. But I'm the firm belief that from an early age, certainly in the Western world, we are wrapped up in cotton wool these days from an early age. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all for getting out there and and uh, living with the dangers to a certain degree and uh, just just get on with it enjoy yourself and don't start wearing your steel toe cap boots for walking around a lake like i am here yes i might twist my ankle or whatever but that's the risk isn't it uh, the build quality of farm machinery well it depends what you're buying in an ideal world anything with an engine i'd go honda every single time uh, if you don't, oof, well, it's a pretty good look. Um, it's it's a flipping lottery out here. Uh, I've said it before. Some of the stuff you buy, uh, you know, Toys R Us would give it a run for its money. We've had stuff that doesn't work as soon as you bought it, or it works in the shop. You get it back, and it breaks within a few minutes. So uh, infuriating, certainly in the early days. Uh, you just get used to it being shite. So uh, I, when it comes to machinery, get the best stuff that you can. Um, finances allowing, of course. Uh, unfortunately, I, I'm very, very green round the gills on fixing machinery. I'm learning a shed load. Tune's very, very good. Uh, but, you know, we've, we've, we've met a couple of guys that fix bits and bobs for us. Look, bloody shit machine crane stealing my snails Oi! I don't care if you're Buddhist if I got my hands on that bloody thing I'd wring its neck right then um, low profit sort of touched upon this so I'll, I'll just give you a quick example we sell a hundred duck eggs large size from anywhere between 90 to 100 bar and it costs us without the price of actually buying the ducks themselves it costs us about 70 bar 70 bar to feed them so 20 bar to tray how long is it going to be back before you pay for your duck that you've purchased 
well, we paid 155 baht each and uh, although the khaki camels are are absolutely amazing there they are over there uh, they don't live and lay an egg a day forever so uh, you've got a limited time to recoup your investment there uh, I know you can eat duck for the rest of your life free of charge but uh, it's very very thin the uh, the profit margins uh, the fish as well you know the way I look at it is we offset what it costs us to feed them um, by not ever buying fish ourselves at, at all since we've been doing this I think Toon's bought a couple of salted fish a couple of times salt sour fish and a few cans of um, what do you call it sardines so you know in a year and a half we've never ever bought a fish to to put in the pan so that's that's worth a lot because we do eat a lot of fish we did before we started growing them anyway um, and we do sell a few but really it's uh, as a venture and I, I do have to admit it if, if you are going to be doing fish farming for a, for a, trying to get a profit guys uh, you've got to do an integrated system in my opinion you, you've got to have poultry shit going in there or or uh, cow shit or, or pig shit you, you, it's just there's no money by the time you've you bought your better grow pellets and that sort of thing you know decent feed uh, you're looking at too much you, you, you I think you'd have to grow in such huge numbers uh, just to get a few quid back so low profits most definitely um, with your crops and that it's still early for us um, you know we'll have to wait and see we know roughly what we can sell stuff for I mean at the moment bamboo because it's the dry season um, cooked bamboo still with the outer sheath on just bored at bamboo 50 baht a kg well the amount of kg we'll be getting from the end of this year or early next year it will be bonkers but that price could drop right down to 10 baht a kg okay so prices I wouldn't say they're they're volatile for things like um, eucalyptus that's pretty stable uh, but things like your cassava your rice your bamboo it will fluctuate quite a bit so uh, again if you if you got your head in the clouds and think you're going to be minted um, farming in Thailand unless you've got some secret recipe guys uh, you're going to be in for a bit of a shock pests yeah quite a few pests I mean just down here didn't have to go very far there again I've not timed this uh, there's the tracks from the uh, the termites so they've been eating the old coconut branches that have popped down here uh, so pest control is a, a, a big issue uh, rats as well you're growing things like cassava and rice uh, you're gonna have to let people on your land or you're gonna have to get get out there and control numbers yourself security um, I think it was seen and seen sorry see, Sean. <laughs> uh, Sean from New Zealand I mean uh, Australia he was saying you're telling me you can't leave your your farm for half a day you know if, if, if that's the truth then uh, you, you, your dogs are shy and they are shy but to be fair and, and I'm quite I, I feel quite strongly about it even if in the UK if we had over 300 poultry which we have here there's no way that me and Toom would leave our farm in the UK with those unattended so you leave your farm you should really get someone looking after it for it um, I mean I know there's a there's a guy Pete he comments quite a bit on here and in rural life Thailand he's got a lovely little pad out there and they've only just moved onto the farm and yet they had all their poultry there and fish in the ponds uh, and no herbert got in there and stole anything so I, I don't think that's the norm I think it's more like it is round here if you leave stuff out and if you if you look up the average debt of a farmer in Thailand it's just too much temptation for most people and uh, a duck or two may well go well it's more likely a guy bang cockerels because they're worth more so security sort it out guys pointless putting fences up people just jump over or break them down uh, as as we experienced 
when we weren't living here we had a, a fence put round the pond and they broke that down so that they could get all the heavy fish out a lot easier uh, burning off sugar cane and uh, rice it's a it's a real issue all over thailand i know chiang mai is in particularly bad chiang mai chiang rai um, so it's just something that you will hate no one enjoys living around that um, but what can you do about it are you going to start kicking off with every farmer that lives near you that burns off i know it's supposed to be illegal um, but generally speaking it's where you very very rarely read or hear about um, someone getting uh, done for it whether things will change or not I, I certainly hope so I can't stand it we've burnt a couple of areas um, which were inaccessible we couldn't even get in there with a the strimmer so yeah it's uh, scorching the land it's it's not good for the land anyway never mind the atmosphere and the environment next one long hours well if you're farming anywhere in the world I'm pretty sure you're doing some serious hours over the week uh, it's got to be a labour of love if you don't love doing it or you only like doing a seven or eight hour day it's not for you don't do it don't even think about it it's um, I've always said it, it's got to be more of a lifestyle than a business if it's a business go and do something else because it's just not going to be you're not going to get the return that you, you, you you're thinking of business wise so get ready for doing some long hours if you've got a fair few quid in your back pocket get plenty of help but of course your profit margins will drop uh, I'm, I'm just going to u-turn because i'm running out of shade as the sun's getting higher um, being hard on yourself and what i mean by this is not so much now but i used to really really beat myself up about not getting jobs done so i'll give you one here that so this would have really pissed me off a year ago Look at all that, or getting low battery, so I'm gonna to have to kick on here. Um, I haven't, still haven't got it all cleared in here. Yeah. Came out this morning and saw, oh, there's a little bit of shade there. I'll, I'll start clearing. So I've cleared around the front. Didn't take me long. Started throwing all the weeds over to where the ducks are. Uh, started putting some rubbish together and cleared around here. Then it's just it's just too hot. I just I just can't do it. Sometimes used to beat myself up terribly. Just be realistic, guys. You are only human, and uh, listen to your body. When it's saying it's had enough, um, just just get yourself in the shade and and get the kettle on. Um, <laughs> Western ideas versus Thai farming ideas. Oh my God. When you first get out here, you're probably pulling your hair out, especially if you know some farming bits and bobs. And um, I'm not saying stick with your guns, guys, but just because we're foreigners in a different country doesn't mean that we're wrong. Uh, we've had plenty of shite advice from locals who have badly got things wrong. Um, always have, don't be scared to have a bash at it. Even if you think it's 50 feet, oh, this might not work. Give it a go. Who knows? Just... Um, People are quick to say that won't fucking work. Don't do that. that that's, that's rubbish. Um, you'll never make any money at that and all that sort of thing. You know, if you're like me in tune, it's not all about the money. It, it's about um, having a bash at growing stuff. Now, my last one, this is really universal. This isn't anything to do particularly with Thailand, but um, I bolted it on and uh, I think it was a guy called Kirk um, that mentioned this probably about getting on for a year ago and he, he used to do farming quite a long time ago and very experienced and he said prioritizing is the main thing you won't have enough hours in the day you can't get everything done so what's most important get those jobs done first then if you've got any spare time start on the other stuff and he's exactly right i used to be of the opinion Oh bloody hell, when I'm here, it's 24-7, me and Toon flat out all the time. Um, we'll have everything done in a year, year and a half. Bollocks. It's absolutely bollocks. This bloke was right. You can't get it all done as you would like. You won't have a manicured 50 right if it's just you and her doing it. So uh, just relax a little bit and don't beat yourself up when uh, you can't get everything done. Just get your important stuff done first. Um, like now, that ship machine, birds come back, so 
it used to piss me off it guess what it still pisses me off now is it a priority not really but i like shouting at it so off i go again uh, then i'm going to come back and i'm going to get the kettle on life is easy in thailand if you choose to live the easy life but this is why we make it so hard because I'm out of my flip-flops. I could get my man boobs out if I wanted to, but you're free. You know, you got you got a real, real life that that most of us could have only dreamt of before we came out here. And to get a get a chance, or taking the taking the chance to come out here and have a go at this, is is an unbelievable opportunity for us. That's that's why we do it. Um, and working as one with your missus, and maybe you've got a look, your young family as well, like Pete, to spend the time with your young family and work together, share the hardships and uh, the highs and the lows, that, that's why we do it. So yes, there is there's a lot of things that are a challenge out here. A lot of the things it would put most people off, but if you fancy giving it a go, just bloody go for it. Don't listen to other people trying to put you off and saying that you'll never make it. Bollocks to them. Just get your balls out and uh, go for it. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. And uh, a big thanks for everyone that turned up the other night for watching Pond the Movie, our premiere. That was a real good laugh in the, uh, the, the live chat. I super enjoyed it. If you missed it, it's still available as a normal video. All right, guys, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you soon. Ta-da.